Hello, and welcome to another edition of Taught Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. The topic we'll be talking about today is the difference between a bright student or a high achieving student and a gifted student. Uh, keep in mind that there are bright students who are gifted. There are gifted students who are bright, but there can be bright students that aren't gifted and there can be gifted students who are not bright. So we're gonna to try to distinguish the difference between these two because a lot of times what ends up happening is we assume certain things about the gifted child that are really attributed more to the bright child and vice versa, um, where we, we expect something of a bright child which really only would apply to a gifted child. So it's important to understand the distinction between these two. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this list right here, which is the bright child versus the gifted learner. And, and you can see the list here and you can go through it. I'll, I'll leave it up here for the duration. Um, but I want to, I do want to focus on a couple of these. So the first one is number one. So a bright child knows the answer. So if there are, there are questions to be answered, this is the student raising their hand and eagerly giving answers. Uh, and so that's what a bright child would look like. A gifted learner, on the other hand, is going to maybe ask questions when these uh, answers are given or when these questions are posed. They have, may have follow-up questions or they may wonder about something or um, you know, wonder what if, uh, if this happened instead. So um, again, a bright you, you could have a gifted student who knows the answers and asks the questions both, but typically uh, the bright child is, is the one who is the one who is complying and is going to answer the questions that the teacher asks as they're asked. They are not going to try to change the answers any. They are not going to try to challenge the answers any. They are just um, complacent to answer the, the, the correct answer and to try to please the teacher by giving the correct answer. The gifted learner, on the other hand, because they ask questions, um, sometimes can see as though seem as though they're challenging the teacher when in fact they're they're not challenging the teacher they're just innately curious and they want to you know um, have their curiosity met through these questions number five is another one so a bright child is a really hard worker um, and the, uh, the high and the high achieving child is a very hard worker this they tend to have what we call grit um, which is, you know, the ability to persevere when faced with a challenge or faced with, um, you know, some kind of struggle. They still are going to work hard. Um, the gifted kid, on the other hand, uh, will play around and yet they'll still test well. Uh, so that can be frustrating for a teacher who's doing classroom management because they expect their, their kids to work hard in order to achieve good grades. And some students have to do that, which is why this is the difference between a bright child who is not gifted. They can get good grades because of their hard work, not because of their ability or their intelligence necessarily. Um, sure, they, they may possess some of that, but they may not be on the level of a gifted child. A gifted child, on the other hand, you know, is not necessarily going to work hard and yet they'll be able to come up with things that will just blow your mind or that are really interesting or, you know, I, I always have a, a teacher that will say, well, they didn't do any of the homework and yet they still got an A on the test. And it's like, well, that's because they, they knew what they were doing and they didn't need to do the homework in the first place. So as teachers in the classroom, we sometimes need to rethink the idea of work for work's sake and making sure that that work is something that's going to be moving them along to learning something new or to expanding upon what they already know. And so if you have a gifted kid who is not working hard, are there things that you can provide that are going to challenge him to want to work hard in order to achieve at a higher level? The next one is number 10. Uh, and this is a very basic one, which is that a bright child uh, has to hear something six to eight times uh, so in order to master it and a gifted child is one or two times uh, to gain mastery and how why this creates some frustration for gifted learners especially is that if you've already got it after two times and you have to hear it another four to six times that can be really frustrating and very mind-numbing to have to listen to stuff that you already have gotten um, and again, there are, there are bright children that may get it after a couple and there are gifted children that don't get it after a couple. But in most cases, the gifted learner is getting it quicker um, than maybe a high achieving kid who's not, who's not gifted. The next one is number 12, which is enjoying peers versus preferring adults. So uh, because a bright child or high achiever is compliant, they enjoy school in general. They enjoy going to school, being with 
with classmates. They enjoy, you know, the structure of the class. They're just compliant kids. They're following the rules. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, and so because of this, they tend to get along with their peers very well. Uh, a gifted child, there are gifted children that will get along with their peers, but there are some that prefer adults. Uh, and I remember experiencing this the first couple of years I was teaching when I was, um, I'd be on the playground at doing uh, playground duty and students would come up and start having conversations with me. And what was really interesting, and this was two or three different students that would come up at various times. Uh, and I came to find out later that these students had been identified and gifted. And, and so what was happening is they were seeking out a conversation. Um, you know, we have a Gifted kids have idiosyncrasies, which means that their um, their intelligence may be at a certain maturity, but their behavior is not. And so they prefer to talk to adults because they can have a more intelligent conversation with that adult. And the adult is going to be more complex in the way that they handle the conversation. Um, but at the same time, then they they don't suffer fools gladly. They do not enjoy their peers sometimes because their peers are talking about things that they think are stupid or that they don't think are worthwhile. Um, and so how you can solve this problem is by having magnet programs where you put like-minded kids together. So if a magnet program typically pulls in um, gifted kids from all over the district. And because they're in one location, they're able to find peers uh, because these are kids who are at the same intellectual level as them. Um, and, 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 you know, part of that uh, preferring adults is that we have to teach the gifted learner to, to the philosophy of better at than as opposed to better than. So in other words, they may be better at math. It doesn't make them better than a student who's not as good at math. And so sometimes that's a lesson that gifted kids need to learn and as we as teachers need to make sure that they are getting. Uh, number 17 is the next one I'm gonna talk about, which is that a, uh, a bright or high achiever really enjoys school. Like I, for reasons I've stated before, they like structure, they like to follow rules, they like to please their teachers and their parents and their peers. And so because of this, school is a great place for them. It's like a Shangri-La because they really get to uh, um, be pleased and, and please their fellow classmates and teachers with their hard work. Um, the gifted student, on the other hand, really enjoys learning. Now, this can be cause some confusion because, you, well, school is where you go to learn. But there's a learning that's in school and there's learning that of, what, of something else. And so gifted students, a lot of times, they, all gifted students love to learn. They just don't necessarily love to learn what it is that's being taught. So if there is a, um, a topic that's being talked about in a class or a lesson that's being covered that that student deems unworthy of them, they're not going to really pay much attention to that. Uh, the bright kid would because that's following the rules and they want to make sure that they're compliant. But the gifted student may just turn off and not pay any attention and not give it any effort. Um, and so ideally in a perfect world in the classroom, what you would do is you would have school lessons that uh, that are intriguing enough to students that they want to learn more about it. Um, and it's meeting that, that idea of goal evaluation where it's something that they think is important. They think that is, um, you know, that's something that is important to them. And it's also something that can, they feel that they can actually meet. Um, and so that there, there is a slight difference between those two, but it is important to understand that difference because the gifted kid may not be doing his homework, but he may go home and teach himself how to play guitar by watching a YouTube video. Um, so in today's day and age with YouTube and different, uh, you know, the internet and all of that is that students, if they want to learn something, they can learn about it by getting online and they're not going to let the teacher get in their way. So another inst instance is, uh, say a, a teacher's doing a lesson, the student doesn't find it worthy, they may just read a book that they find interesting in order to, you know, uh, satisfy their 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 love of learning. Uh, so we, as teachers, we try to I, we need to try to do a better job of matching up the lessons with learning, and, and that that so people can see clearly what the learning is. The last one I'm going to talk about is a bright child or, or um, high achieving child prefers straightforward tasks. So you give them directions, you say you need to follow steps one through five, and they will follow them um, like a soldier marching to, you know, the sound of their drill sergeant. So they, they are going to do what, what it is that's laid in front of them because you've given them a task. And in order to please the, the teacher and to, to keep compliant with the school, they're going to follow those tasks. 
Um, a gifted learner, on the other hand, doesn't necessarily like straightforward tests. They like to go all over the place. Their thoughts and their ideas are sort of scattered all over the place. And so trying to bring that in or trying to focus that can sometimes be really challenging. Uh, and so as much as possible, I try to give students open-ended tasks that have all sorts of possibilities because that way they can they can explore whatever it is that they find interesting about the particular topic um, and that they can really j dig in deep there. The, the bright child or high achiever still gets to follow their, ta their straightforward tasks if they're doing this, but the open-endedness allows the gifted student then to, you know, to use their complexity and to, to explore it at a much deeper level. So that's the bright child versus the gifted child. There is a third aspect that can be added on to that. Uh, and this is the creative child. So you can see in this visual here that um, bright, gifted, and creative can some, like, like I said before, so sometimes they can all be the same student. But you will have students who are very creative who are not gifted. Um, they may be gifted in creative thinking, but they're not gifted in any subject areas or cognitively. You might have a bright child who is not gifted or creative. Um, and so it's important to know the difference between these. Um, but to point out a couple of these, um, a bright child it does learn with ease because they're following the rules, because they're following along, because they're paying attention. Learning is easy for them, even though they, they're working very hard at it. They make it look easy. Um, if they weren't working as hard, it would not be as easy for them. A gifted learner, on the other hand, may already know the material. So something that's being covered, they may have already watched a documentary on it or, done, or have done a lesson or seen a demonstration or whatever. The creative learner, on the other hand, is going to question they're going to ask, what if? Uh, what if it had been something else? Because the creative learner, uh, the way they think is very um, atypical. It's not the most obvious answer. They are going to come up with very off-the-wall responses, which makes perfect sense to them, but doesn't make any sense to anyone else. And so training that gifted learner to communicate their ideas so that it makes sense to others is really important. Um, going back to that idea of peers, adults, and um, the creative learner is, is someone who really prefers creative peers or likes to work alone. So if it's someone that they don't feel is creative, they're not going to want to work with them. They'll just do it by themselves because they feel they can do a better job um, with their creativity. The one I think that's the easiest to tell between the three is the sense of humor. So a bright child is going to really understand. If So as a teacher, I tend to be sarcastic quite a bit. And when I would work with fourth and fifth grade students, it was interesting that some fourth and grade, fifth and grade students did not get the sarcasm at all. They took it completely as a concrete statement and not something that was meant to be taken sarcastically. Um, the bright child understands this though, and they'll get that sort of humor. So this is the kid who, you know, this is the kid who chuckles at, at when you say something that's maybe a little over the head of others. Um, the gifted learner, on the other hand, uh, likes to create complex abstract humors. In other words, they like things that are a little different than the norm. So uh, even though the, the bright child gets the joke, the gifted learner is like, well, can we take that joke a little bit further? Or have you considered this? Or, And the creative learner, on the other hand, sometimes they can be so off the wall with their humor that it doesn't seem appropriate. Um, to them, it makes sense because it follows within their creative thinking. But to others, uh, it doesn't follow along with social norms or it doesn't... Um, you know, it doesn't go along with the rules of the, the classroom or whatever. So, um, so in this case, using that humor. So a bright child will get the humor. The gifted learner will not only get it, they'll want to take it a step further. And the creative learner may come up with something completely different that you hadn't even thought of, which is what makes them a creative thinker. Um, to illustrate what this might look like in the classroom, this visual right here shows kind of when students are posed with a question, they're going to have different kinds of responses. So a high achiever or bright child is going to say, oh, I know the answer to that. That's they're going to be and they're going to raise their hand and they're going to try to answer that as best they can. The gifted learner is going to question that. They're going to say, I know the answer, but have they really thought about this or have they considered this or, you know, what if something had been different? Uh, the creative learner, on the other hand, is going to come up with all sorts of possibilities to the point where they can't focus it because they're thinking of so many different possibilities. So the, the example that I often heard um, was that if, if students were, were um, 
given a really simple task, students that are answering the most obvious answer are your high achievers, but the ones that are thinking a little bit differently are your creative learners. So for example, if you ask them to describe what a submarine is, 95% of your students are going to say a submarine is a metal ship that goes in the ocean and has a periscope and can sh shoot torpedoes. A creative learner might say a submarine actually has two slices of bread with meat in between and tomato and lettuce and sometimes mayo. Uh, but they're, they're looking at that submarine a little differently. It's not the most obvious answer to them. Uh, and they're, they're going to see a little bit differently. So there's a difference between uh, bright or high achieving students and gifted students and with a little bit of creative thinkers thrown in there. It is important as a teacher that you understand the difference between these students because you're going to reach them very differently. The high achiever, you're going to you know, challenge by giving them more work. The gifted learner, you're not going to challenge by giving them more work. They're going to be challenged by doing different work. And the creative learner is going to be challenged by giving them things that they can develop themselves to work on uh, so they'll get to create. So that look, it looks very different with the way that you handle, try to challenge these students. And so it's, it's important to know in your classroom, are you dealing with high achievers, gifted or creative learners or a mix of them and, and then differentiating amongst that.